a coconut helmet no uh you know like no full protection on your face something i feel worried but <laughs> uh as someone who's flexible i don't have any fixed plan the story where i lost my purse oh no <laughs> Okay, so in uh, Indonesia is quite heavy rain. Uh, I heard from some of my friends that they are in like Makassar, they got flood, like yeah, big flood. Oh. oh no! I hope they're well now. But mm-hmm. in this time of the year, it's common to have flood. Mm-hmm. Time of the year, it's common to have flood. Okay, mm-hmm. how do I like? I need to like. Time of the. Yep, yeah, it's muted. <laughs> Uh, good evening, a uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome back to another Journeys Live session. Today we have a very special guest uh, currently in Indonesia. Which yeah. part of Indonesia? Bandung. Bandung. So we have Shifa here today with us. Um, she's far more advanced and far more yeah. vers- versatile, knowledgeable, Compared to me, my nah. <laughs> solo traveling in Southeast As- Southeast Asia. So we're going to he- hear all about her stories today. And I myself, I can't wait to hear about it. So welcome, Shifa. Thank you for being a, a part of this journey. Do introduce yourself to the community. Okay. Hello. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi, you all, uh, all around the world. So uh, I'm Ashifa Halimat Sadia, but you can call me Shifa or Achifa. Internet most known me as Achifa. So yeah, uh, like Fari has said before, uh, maybe I'm not that quite experienced in solo traveling in Southeast Asia, but yeah, okay. Let me share a bit about solo traveling. Uh, maybe you want to explore more the Southeast Asia and maybe welcome to, I'll be very welcome if you come to Indonesia. <laughs> so thank you so much for that. But I do feel like you are quite experienced. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, like when it comes to not experience it, some people have not even done it at all. So mashallah, you have done mm-hmm. quite a lot. So let's start. So today at a glance, we're going to listen to interesting stories of Southeast Asia map in the middle that is Shifa really really cute and her passport stories which I'm so excited to and I'm sure the community can learn a thing or or Mm -hmm. two because no matter where you are in the world it's pretty much similar it's just different Mm -hmm. destinations but you can learn and we're gonna rewind uh, lots of tales from Shifa's past experiences and that lasts dish is it a surprise or we we cannot reveal it now is it shifa yeah so when did you start solo traveling we always like to ask about this Mm -hmm. it's good to know where you come from and how what made you start solo traveling so when was it okay so it's uh, actually it's my first time around 29 uh, 2019 I guess yeah it's like maybe four years ago four three or four years ago uh, actually I joined the student exchange in Phuket Thailand but at that time after the um, the activities is already and I just thinking oh maybe I can extend to like w- one or two days in Phuket Thailand just exploring by myself and then before heading back to my hometown Bandung so uh got transit in Kuala Lumpur Malaysia and then I think okay it's it's nice to explore this city for like eight hours eight or ten hours um since that uh actually I got so many interesting stories for me at that time as um you know like 18 years old teenager exploring the world exploring the neighborhood country by myself and then after that um i'm thinking uh maybe i can do this again in the future and um, in 2019 itself i just exploring three times <laughs> to overseas like yeah especially just to malaysia and singapore so 2019 2019 is the biggest year for my solo traveling experience mashallah so it was a student exchange and mm-hmm. we've heard this quite a lot uh mm-hmm. 
people start to get to know solo traveling mm -hmm. when they go on a student exchange because sometimes you can't even justify to your parents why are you traveling alone <laughs> but there's a reason behind it i'm going for a student exchange okay. yeah think, but that is a that is a great start because mm -hmm. you go there not for the sake of solo traveling and then you mm -hmm. find out about solo traveling mm -hmm. so anything that you picked up there yeah actually uh one of the main reason actually not that one of the main reason before be uh there is some experience that i got uh when i uh, made a passport so yeah of course before you go to travel abroad you need a passport and then back then before in 28 20 the, yeah 2018 i made a passport um there is some circumstance in my family i got a lot of you know like mental health experience because i think this kind of solo traveling become my escape to you know like um yeah i think you're gonna my... like talk more about your <laughs> later it's yeah. my mental health problems but back then after that i'm thinking i need to solve this problem first before i encounter to you know to this uh, experience by myself so um i actually got experience you know like got delayed on my flight back to my hometown so it's actually pretty uh interesting because after that day i need to take the exam test on my campus on my college uh, but you know like as someone who never been uh in abroad uh with family it's quite challenging for me at first but at that time i really uh exploring myself i guess like self-discovery things to to know uh, what my limitation um yeah it's pretty interesting <laughs> that's great that is the start to the shifa now mm -hmm. but how was it to your family when you told them you know Mm -hmm. What's this like before and after and because after that you started to like continue solo traveling yeah. so how was it actually my mom especially is uh, the one who didn't allow me to go uh, alone but as someone who cannot to resist the solo traveling so sometimes i feel like okay just let's do this without telling your mom without telling your parents i know there is a term that uh just go first it's it's better for you to 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 say sorry rather than to ask for permission <laughs> in indonesia we call like uh lebih baik minta maaf daripada minta izin uh so it's like uh if you say sorry at least you have done this experience but if you ask this uh the firm the permission maybe your parent didn't allow you to do so and you cannot experience that solo traveling so yeah i just go first and then told my mom after after that solo traveling experience that uh two weeks ago i just um came to malaysia to singapore and then here i am seven sound so don't worry mama that's it oh my god and this was the first solo trip or this the subsequent one oh uh, it's maybe like second second and second yeah, one like that. <laughs> but and then after that does she trust you now because she knows you've done it yeah 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 after several experience without telling my parents uh before i go to uh before i go to traveling so uh they now know that i will go to travel because you know uh, it's also work purpose for now so and of course because i'm staying in my uh parents home so they will know if I go outside the home, right? Because at the time in college, I stay in a student dorm. So no need to tell your parents where I go and blah, blah. <laughs> Not that we recommend that to anyone. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting story. Yeah. But as long as you know how to take care of yourself, yeah. like yeah. everything else in life, solo traveling comes with yeah. its own challenges. Mm -hmm. Nothing's perfect, but you made it. So yes. Yeah, you should know the risk about your decision. And I know the risk and I took the risk. So. That's true. That is being an irresponsible mm -hmm. adult. Yeah, so like this many photos, it's better to say sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than. <laughs> Rather yeah. than, what was it again? 
Ya, yeah, better than to ask permission. Better than to ask permission. Okay. So challenges when solo mm -hmm. traveling. This is the meat, I guess, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. today's session mm -hmm. before we go on to Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. um, no solo travel is perfect. There are things that we should go quote sometimes with mm -hmm. our pretty reels, pretty photos. Um, mm -hmm. But some days you want to cry. I also feel like there were some days I've I've also had like my own episodes where I fought with people on the train. So mm -hmm. what, what were your episodes when it comes to solo traveling? And how did you overcome that? And how has it made you a better person, a better Muslim at the end of the day? Yeah, there is a lot of experience and challenge when I do solo traveling. My last trip to uh, Vietnam and Cambodia, I met some Muslim that really makes me question uh, more about my religion as a Muslim, uh, Islam, and so on. So like uh, they ask me, do you know that if you are on traveling, you you need you don't need to do a prayer for like uh, some days. At that time, I was on my period, of course, uh, but I, uh, I'm trying to reply to them about uh, you can still do your prayer even though you are on traveling, like doing uh, with Chiamma and Kosor uh, prayer. But yeah, with this kind of different uh, perspective, Muslim, because they are coming from different background and country, I think... Um, I'm trying to respect what the culture is, but uh, of course, I'm doing my 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 perspective. Uh, um, what Islam taught me. So, like, I'm still doing my prayer on my traveling. So, no, yeah, it 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 makes me more uh want to learn more about my religion itself. But uh, mm -hmm. other than that, the challenge like the, especially the language barrier. Even though uh, I'm traveling to Southeast Asia, it's quite uh, uh some uh barriers in our language because you know miss like like in Indonesia and Malaysia, you know like uh we have some pretty common language in Indonesia and Malay. Yes, correct. sometimes I do like lost in trans uh, translation and um, misunderstanding about some words that maybe in Indonesia it's have different uh, meaning with Malay uh, language. So, uh, at the time, so, so what was what uh, was what that made you lost in translation? Yeah, uh, at the time, uh, okay, so maybe I I will take you a bit about the story where I lost my first. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, oh. I lost my first in Ipoh. There is a city in Malaysia. Uh, actually, not not big pocket. Maybe just I just drop it somewhere, and then when I go back to search my purse, and it just lost, and then I got panic, and then I'm trying. Actually, it's not okay if I lost the money. It's not that big actually, but you know, like the ID card, the uh, uh, debit card, and everything important cards uh, on my purse is really important for me, and then. Uh, I just heading to the police station and then at that time uh, there is you know like the and and trends like if you go to this uh, you know like what is called uh, the traffic the 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 traffic and then if you the lost your ID card. Yeah. yeah and then at the time I just choose like Chimas so I don't know. Uh, in Indonesia, Chemas feels like miserable. So, how do I? Okay, let me check. This so, in Indo so it's 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 basically the word exists in both yeah. Malaysia and Indonesia. Yeah, Malaysia and Indonesia very it's differently. Different, different meaning. So it's like uh, I just uh push the button with the Chemas things in Indonesia. Chemas mean anxious, like worried, because you know I feel worried because my fur is gone. Of it's course, lost. definitely you've lost yes, your right? ID <laughs> and your money. Oh my gosh! Of course, and then I wait for like one or two hours, and then after I got my uh, entry number, they said, "Uh, do you uh, you know, like the okay? Let me check the." 
Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, the traffic accident, the, the police say, do you feel the uh, traffic accident? I think, no, I'm not. I lost my purse. And then he said that is different entries for like cemas thing. Because in Malaysia, maybe cemas meaning uh, accident. While in Indonesia, cemas mean anxious worried. So it's quite oh, different. okay. And this yeah. was the police station in Malaysia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Ipoh, and I feel like more chumas, more oh, anxious no. because I I wait for like two hours and then okay, just go to the right uh, entrance and then yeah, uh, I got the report to 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 say that I lost my purse, my ID card, and so on. But it's really interesting because now I know <laughs> how to do the language barrier. Even though like Indonesian and Malay, Malay is quite a bit because we share the same culture and background in the past time. Yes, but exactly. still you need to learn their culture. But and sometimes culture. it's difficult for you to know because you don't live there. Mm -hmm. So the only way to know is through situations like this and stories from you sometimes okay. we, we just need to know from experiences like mm -hmm. this um and it's very interesting that you mm -hmm. pointed out that mm -hmm. two words which is similar in mm -hmm. malaysia mm -hmm. and indonesia but they mean totally different things yeah. but after that did you manage yeah. to solve the issue and how was it you lost your money did you have like a backup and was your passport in it or no? It's yeah, no, no. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. And Thankfully, Alhamdulillah. Feel safe <laughs> and sound. Because if uh that's uh true, my passport loss, I'm gonna more like then chamas, more than, like anxious and panic, and yeah. maybe my mom will uh uh do not trust me again to do solo traveling because I can't manage that thing. But after that, after I got the police report and I'm uh coming back to my hometown and tell my mom that I lost my purse. Actually, yeah, she got pretty um angry at the time because why you do that? I'm mean, like. It's the experience. I never imagine. I I don't want that that experience, of course. But yes, uh, she managed to to accompany me to do to the um regional office to make the new ID card and so on. So yeah, and about the money actually. So, so, just... so before we go that, mm -hmm. uh, if at that time, how mm -hmm. many days left did you have? In, um, like were you like? Like in your itinerary, yeah. were you supposed to be in Malaysia before you go back? Actually, when maybe it's it? like half of the the yeah around maybe like it's uh still half of the planning days in Malaysia, but I still can manage because I have another uh debit card on my hidden uh hidden bag. Do you hidden know order. like? Hidden yeah, hidden wallet. wallet that's that, really good uh, idea. Come in e-commerce, so yeah, still can manage or at least maybe I, I don't know if I don't have that one. Maybe I don't know, but still, you guys, you need to have that hidden wallet, uh, like a belt on your stomach in your stomach. So it's really nice to keep some of the money and then uh another debit card or credit card. So if uh something happened something worse happened you can still got the backup that is true mm -hmm. i speaking on the belt one i have yeah. one but it yeah. can be very uncomfortable but yeah. i do have one especially like if i'm on the flight mm -hmm. i feel like that's very important because we sleep and everything yeah yeah but so money and then and then you you carried on as usual mm -hmm. so the police did they help Actually, actually, I hope that they will give me some money, like, like yeah, a bit of uh, pocket money. Because, you know, back at that time, I'm still in college, like a uh, teenager and, you know, like lost your money and your purse. But no, I didn't get any help. So, yeah, I, I can still manage by myself. Thankfully, Alhamdulillah. That's Alhamdulillah, okay. but you managed to. Uh... <laughs> yeah. You managed to overcome through this. Not yeah. that we want this to happen to anyone. Yes, yes, it's just yes, good of course, to know no one wants to do. what to do. The the most important thing is not to dwell on mm -hmm. the bad experience, unpleasant yeah. experience, but to yeah. overcome it and make the most of it. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, true, true. At least you get the well prepared situation. Of course, no one uh don't want this worst experience to happening, but at least you you know how to overcome this and then get situation better and try to do not panic, stay calm, and True. you will go through this challenge. Inshallah, and don't put every don't put all your money in one person. Yes, order. yes, true, true. This is a reminder to me because sometimes I feel like ah, oh, I'm a pro in traveling. I don't need, <laughs> it yet. but because you you bring this story, some uh -huh. I will prepare myself on a different wallet. Yeah. So thanks so much, Shifa, for telling this. Yes, yes, we all need a reminder every now and then. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. The best part of today's life is solo mm -hmm. traveling as a Muslim woman in Southeast Asia. Yes. So where do you want to start? Where do you want to begin? Mm -hmm. Philippines, Vietnam. Let's start with the Muslim minority countries first. Okay. So my uh, second last trip uh, to Fi to Philippines, the Philippines, around September last year. Actually, uh, I just come... I don't think that Philippines will be my favorite country. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I mean, like... Your own personal... Um, uh... <laughs> nah, yeah, don't take it personally <laughs> for, like, Philippines mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. But at the time, I got the promo ticket uh, to Manila from Jakarta. So I think, why not? Because I only pay, like, 20 bucks to, to Manila. And it's... it's not bad. Really, yeah, yeah, to, to them. And then experience uh actually philippines like the muslim minority uh country because the majority is christian and catholic so as a muslim as a muslim woman i feel like uh quite uh it's really hard for me to find the halal food oh yes let's yes. go next I yes because of course and and the Philippines itself is not, you know, like the meat eater country. Unlike, let's say, India, the vegan one. If you, at least, if you cannot find halal food, you can uh, still try the vegan option, right? But in Philippines, it's quite uh, a bit hard. Base. But um, inshallah, I hope Allah give me the reader because I'm trying to just searching for the Muslim friendly ingredients like do uh, no pork, large and it's uh, yeah anything else. So yeah, uh, but Philippine is quite interesting for me, uh, especially if you love the island life because they have Palawan, Cebu, Boracay, and anything else. But as Indonesian, as we have like more beautiful islands, <laughs> and it's more Muslim friendly. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite comparison it to about Indonesia and Philippines. So yeah. But it's sometimes cool. we just want to experience how is it like because yeah, like, for right, example, right, people right. like you and me, we come from Muslim majority countries. Yeah. We want to experience how's the beach life there. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But I like this um reel that's on the mm -hmm. left side, this joyride. Mm -hmm. So perhaps you can share a little bit about that. And yeah. Um, yeah. Uh so uh in Philippines, uh the transportation is actually not pretty uh you know, like pretty advanced, like in um, Malaysia, Indonesia, or even Singapore, but uh, they have this um, online transportation. Uh, the apps, uh, there are some apps that talk online transportation that if you know, grab and then uh, the local one, Joyride and Ankas. So it's actually motorbike uh, transportation when you can hop in with a driver and then, yeah, took you to. Uh, another destination so it's actually pretty experience uh, pretty pretty interesting because in indonesia we uh don't have this like i don't know this, this like the one behind you i don't know it's like the um, it's like that box behind the box, the yeah, the box so behind you mm -hmm. and for me it's quite really hard because you know i'm quite big i know like uh and then with my bag and then uh it's so you're squeezed uh, into the front yes yeah, yeah, squeeze in this motorbike and quite um near with the driver so and then the driver sub took very very fast so it's really sometimes i feel like oh this experience motor ride experience in every country is really um you know like it's different different, different experience because in Vietnam, you know, they use like half a uh, head helmet. 
Oh, so it's uh, I know yeah. it's like a coconut house. Coconut house. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That one. So, uh, so just so a, a bit of context. Mm. It's like it's not a full helmet. It's yes. Uh -huh. So how was it? Was were you uncomfortable? <laughs> Actually, uh, as someone who comes from the country that we wear a full helmet, and that we wear that uh, I wear that coconut helmet. No, uh, you know, like no full protection on your face. Sometimes I feel worried, but <laughs> you can manage. You feel yeah. worried for your safety. Yeah, maybe in, in like Vietnam, Cambodia, and then Thailand. I, I guess they were they have this like coconut helmet. So, That's yeah. very interesting. <laughs> and um, this is one thing about uh solo traveling uh -huh. in Northeast Asia. You must 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 go on the uh bike ride and like yes. Last month, Gia also mentioned mm -hmm. uh, your mm -hmm. your camaraderie from Indonesia yes. as well. You mentioned that how to ride comfortably in um, Indonesia. I think that is very interesting together mm -hmm. with your knowledge mm -hmm. on how are the motorbikes in the Philippines, yes. Cambodia, was it just now, Thailand. Mm -hmm. They all have their own unique experiences. About this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, for nice. this kind of dish I found in Vietnam, Vietnam is also one of the uh, Muslim minority uh, country, but uh, I still managed to find the halal food option. Uh, back then in Vietnam, I visited uh, Hanoi, the capital city, and Ho Chi Minh or Saigon, if you know, like um, th their national dish called pho or pho it's like pho i don't know like they're called this name like pho or v, v. it's like v. from my understanding it's pho is it pho it's sometimes people said that va or pho i don't know how to say it i'm sorry guys <laughs> no but that is a good um how do you say it? that is a good insight because yeah. sometimes they fall and then uh, i don't know maybe they'll serve us something else <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, yeah the if the boys the... of some uh even though they're uh served with a beef or sometimes chicken but i still find that uh with the broth because maybe the broth uh, may contain the lard or pork uh products so you can try to ask the owner about the uh product or ingredients in the fur but I'm, I'm still can manage to find a halal uh, option restaurant near Hanoi. Actually, it's not that quite near in the city center, but still can find about this, like the bun cha and then this Vietnam spring roll. It's really nice. It's really tastes good. It's like heaven in your mouth. Like, you know, I want to go back to Vietnam again sometimes. Oh, no, I want to go to oh, Vietnam. Wow. Yeah. So I like this. Um, Whenever we go to... Uh, mm -hmm any country yes there is usually a neighborhood where you can find mm -hmm. food it's like recently i was in geneva it was in paki area mm -hmm. so around that area you can see like indian food Singaporean okay. food okay um turkish food so you yeah, know yeah, yeah. That. that's like one of the distinguished like you said here you mm -hmm. can find Halal food, inshallah, yeah. in Malay Lane. Because yeah. um, for those who understand, who, mm -hmm. who uh, context, uh, Malays are Muslims by default in countries like Malaysia. Yes. Yeah. Singapore, it's a bit, it ha they have their own rules, but yeah. yeah. And even Indonesia, Malays are by default Muslims, right? Yeah, most of the time, mostly. Yeah, so uh, in Vietnam, in Hanoi, it's not that quite common for halal food option uh, because they serve more like coffee, cafe, things like that. But when I uh, visit heading to Ho Chi Minh City, the second largest, uh, the second largest city in uh, Vietnam, there are some, there are a Malay Lane near the Bantan Market. Yeah, Bentan Market in Ho Chi Minh that they serve this the, and anything Vietnam national dish with halal food option. And I feel like it's more like home to me because the owner itself, maybe they can speak Malay. So it's actually, like I said before, Malay and Indonesia is quite pretty same. So I can speak Indonesia freely, just say uh, order it uh, with Indonesian or Malay language. So no language barrier, uh, barrier anymore. <laughs> 
and that is so funny how we uh, tend to appreciate our language mm -hmm. whenever we go abroad. Yes. But before we move on to the next yeah. slide, there's a question from Salma Khalid. Is there any halal cert certifications in the Philippines? Did you, I'm pretty sure you don't really know much, but did you perhaps see any halal certifications like in the restaurants in the Philippines, maybe? Mm, actually, in the Philippines stuff, I don't find you that remember halal anything. certification logo. You, not, you could yes. not find it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I couldn't find that, but... Uh, at the time, I'm trying to just order the foods with the Muslim friendly uh, ingredients. Yeah, ingredients like chicken or fish. Yeah, okay. but maybe, yeah, you should try to explore more about this certification. Uh, but but some part there are some uh parts in the Philippines that known for like Muslim friendly city. Uh, it's called Dapao, Dapao City, and then um, I forgot the name. Yeah, because if you know on the maps, uh, in the south of the Philippines, it's quite near with the part of Indonesia, Manado. So some of the parts of Philippines also have the Muslim um people, but I don't uh, visit that city, unfortunately. Yeah, so I hope that answers your question, Salma. I think there needs to be a deeper research into this, mm -hmm. but from her experience, um, you could not find any. But yeah. I myself, I personally, I've been thinking of Davao mm -hmm. and I want to experience how are the Muslims living there. So inshallah, mm -hmm. when the time comes, where do we begin? Hostel oh life, <laughs> Okay, you, maybe we can um, start the hostel life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from the stories that you've told, obviously you're very adventurous. Mm -hmm. So with, taking adve with being adventurous and taking risks, you also go through some hiccups. Yeah, we all do. So, what have you learned from your adventures? Actually, as someone who do like solo traveling, it's uh nice for me to get this experience, like a rich experience with staying one of them, like staying in hostel rather than hotel. It's it's quite a big difference with us in it, right? Uh, in hostel you can uh meet another solo traveler traveler, uh, that you can uh be your adventure partner and then because, uh, you know, like solo traveling doesn't mean that you're going solo like every single day. Uh, when you're traveling abroad, right? But yeah, uh, in solo traveling you can meet uh new 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 friends and then they become your friends and then exploring the city together and so on so in hostel it's really nice because first thing first it's cheap of course like i can uh pay maybe around three three dollars per night for a nice hostel i mean like it's really good uh like maybe are less than ten ten dollar uh for night rather than with like hotel because you know in hotel you need at least stay uh, minimum to uh to guess right uh, per night and for me uh i'm not quite comfortable to stay by myself in the nice hotel oh, okay okay yeah you know you're solo traveling you would still want to be accompanied when mm. you're actually not not that kind of company but you know like uh, if you stay in hotel, but you just uh, take all the bed by yourself, I feel like, nah, it's better for me to do like hostel with the bunk bed mm -hmm. or, or dorm or maybe capsule or anything else. But it's more like you can meet uh, new people, talk with them, and then become your um, partners to do uh, traveling. So yeah, hostel is best, guys. <laughs> That's true. Um, I love that as well. When I was in Belgium, uh, I could not find any yes. decent hotel so mm -hmm. I found a hostel and then mm -hmm. I was sleepy very sleepy when I woke up I think this blonde lady from Italy she was telling me you should go to Ghent and it did not cross my mind to go to Ghent okay. but because of her like you said the uh -huh. that you made from your hostel uh -huh. they give you ideas you should go here you should go here yes. sometimes we come unprepared there's so many yes. things to do yeah. but then when you meet these people they've mm -hmm. told you their experiences and then you can consider 
Yeah, so any friends that are that were memorable to you, what did they suggest to you, perhaps? Actually, my first experience back then in Phuket, uh, I'm trying to like stay in hostel in female dorm. And then there is someone, I don't know uh, is, is from where, uh, what's her name and anything else, but just do you want to take my shoes? It's actually pr- new, new shoes, but because she cannot uh, carry that shoes because she only bring like a backpack, I guess. Maybe uh, mm. the, the shoes cannot fit in uh, in her backpack. So she just offered me something big. But if you remember, uh, as someone who told by their parents, do not take something from strangers because <laughs> yeah maybe something will happen to you and blah 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 but I think at the time I just trust my feeling trust my gut she just uh, want to do a kind yeah she's kind I mean like offer for free these shoes and then I just take it and it's really quite uh good shoes I wore it for like uh every single day is big in my hometown and it's a really nice experience and then I met uh some guys like to accompanying me to like walking tour in the city and um, there's so a lot more story and then I found some friends back then when I I met her in Bali and then we met again in Ho Chi Minh but we we we've never like uh, planned to do so just just you just uh, happen to be yeah, there coincidentally yeah. you saw on instagram yeah ah, yeah yeah. Well. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah and then yeah, it's really it's really nice to uh, do a hustle uh because it's cheap and you can get more experience rather than you're staying in hotel but i think not every single of you uh very comfortable i know like not not everyone comfortiness is same uh one to another but uh if you want to try just just try it first and then if if it's good and then you can do it but if it's bad maybe try it again yeah. or yeah or if not uh, go for capsules <laughs> yeah but i think uh it's a still a great experience for me so far and if I uh need to choose about hostel and hotel for my next trip, uh even though maybe I I can do pay for like hotel for like more bucks, but maybe I still thinking to pick hostel. Yeah. Yeah, because um that's the thing when you when you solo travel, you're not really at the mm-hmm. hotel unless you're there to relax and enjoy yeah, the yeah, for the hotel. vacation but thing. For, for the majority of you're out and about mm-hmm. so it's good that you're saving that cost so yeah. that you know you can save more for your yeah future. yeah for sure and how is packing lightly you know we are hijabis <laughs> we have so many i myself i still tr- struggle with this sometimes i look mm-hmm. at my hijab mm-hmm. i'm like i want to bring this as well i want to bring mm-hmm. so how do you pack light when you you know yeah you- uh as a muslim ma- uh, mm-hmm. actually I bit quite um you know like it's kind of different it, uh, if you know someone like do not wear hijab and then just uh goes along with the shirt and tank top and blah blah thing because they can pack more and can pack lightly but uh so they can bring people, a backpack we can't yeah yeah how, right? okay, how, do, how do we do that <laughs> <laughs> uh but uh my tips are just using the you know like the vacuum bag that uh it can fit more and then not to uh it's must save the space on your bag or even your baggage so and then mix and match your outfit because i'm not someone that you know like instagram worthy um like no, everyone food. everyone wants to because you know who we don't know when are we going to go back to that country of course we yeah of course but, <laughs> but but just trying to mix and match the clothes that you bring uh from your home like because i just uh most of my clothes are uh black white and gray color so it's um it's really easy for me to just make and match that and no need to you know like uh fit this color to this color that's, yeah it's yeah that's very I'm, I'm <laughs> kind of minimalistic because that that color like just go with uh fit uh one to another right so and then you can also do laundry uh in the destination there are a lot of laundry options like 
you just pay like a, a dollar for like one kilo and then or maybe like self-service machine laundry machine and uh yeah th this this uh this service actually offered if you stay in the city center area so no need to worry about this taking lightly i like that i love the tips mix and match and mm -hmm. laundry. laundry um and then vacuum bag vacuum bag i have not yet tried that but yeah. i will try it after this because of your suggestion so immigration stories what Immig what is that do tell us you're already laughing <laughs> I guess that's a really, really worst experience that ever that I've been faced uh, on my last trip. So uh, my on my last trip, I went to Vietnam, right? Vietnam, Cambodia, and then I skipped Thailand. If you uh, watch, uh, if you saw the world map, you will see that I'm from Vietnam to from north and then to the south to Cambodia and then Thailand before you're heading to Malaysia. But at the time, uh, the the Thailand border between Cambodia and Thailand, I forget the name, uh, Poi Pat, Poi Pat in Cambodia, and then Aranya Pratet in Thailand, didn't allow me to enter Thailand, Thailand country, right? And this was in 2020? 2022, yeah. 2022. Yeah, it's pretty near the Christmas. I still remember the date, mm -hmm. like 23rd December. Yeah. At that time, because uh, so after waiting for like hours to get entry to the Aranya Prata border, and then the immigration stuff, uh, I got random check because you know I'm the one with only hijab, and um, yeah, they just asked me where are you, uh, where do you want to go, and then what are you doing, and yeah, anything, uh, the question that will immigration stop us, and then after she asked me several questions, she told me that I can enter Thailand uh, via borderland, and it sucked for me, I got really sucks at that time, because, you know, <laughs> and then we via bus or train uh, bus it's actually bus, bus, okay. yeah, from Siem Reap in Cambodia to Bangkok actually but on the border uh yeah oh, I got no. declined they didn't allow me to enter this country because maybe maybe the main reason because I don't have any ticket out of the country the return ticket because uh as someone who is flexible I don't have any fixed plan yet, uh, but uh, from my previous experience, when I go to Vietnam and then uh, Vietnam to Cambodia via border land, land border, they didn't ask me about what's your plan uh, in this country and anything else. I, I think, of course, I just do uh, traveling holiday, not planning to work, even though I'm working online. I mean, like work from anywhere, right? But not means that I'm working for this country illegally no so maybe because at uh at that reason they didn't allow me to do so but I said that I can book the ticket out of the country uh from Thailand uh like right now on the spot. spot yeah right but still uh she didn't allow me to do so she said that if you are um good enough to fund your traveling you need to go back to the cm rep city to the yeah to the city right and actually it's like two uh, three or four hours oh because yeah, you're yeah, already at the like border three or four hours this time between the borders and the cm rep and took the flight from cm rep airport to bangkok but since i really really angry because her decision and I just keep uh Bangkok or uh, and Thailand itself and just book a flight from Siem Reap to Kuala Lumpur Malaysia and it's actually you know like I got really really angry uh, but at the same time sad and anxious and anything else because oh, after I feel sad now <laughs> yeah more 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 dramatic scenes uh coming so after that uh after i took the taxi with 
uh they cost me so many bucks like i don't know how many is it like two i yeah i don't know it's like a big box yeah for me to, uh, from the border to back to the cm rep and then after that i got panic because uh i have a severe condition history with mental health like panic attack and then uh the panic attack relapsed and then um, i got uh, take by ambulance to the emergency oh. and hospital because my what is like uh I got like hypo 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 what is like hypo 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 yeah. hypo, 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 hypo it's okay we're not med medical yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay you don't yeah. have to I just uh painted like blood sugar oh my god it's really hard low blood sugar and then on the emergency room, uh, they give me the IV injection and things. Uh, it's more worse because I don't have any travel insurance. Yeah, tips, guys. For any travel trip, uh, just That's buy so a sweet. travel insurance, right? <laughs> and then I need to pay like 400 bucks, uh, $400 for that experience to go to hospital in the middle of night because um immigrate uh, thailand immigration didn't allow me to do so so it's quite really really i got angry but at the same time i really learned in the hard way uh <laughs> yeah so many things trying to you know like stay calm rather than to get angry to the immigration stuff i'm trying to find the solution how i can overcome how can i cope this bad situation the cha the chaotic uh the worst experience unpleasant thing right the unwanted that uh i never imagined before i i got declined because as uh indonesian you know like it's a part of asia right we are uh, in the southeast asia country we don't need to apply for a visa to enter um the Southeast Asia, so I never imagined that. Because Thailand but... is a very popular international mm -hmm. destination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But of course, it would shock you mm -hmm. to experience mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, sure. And then, yeah, uh, I really learned in the hard way for these immigration stories. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that such a meaningful, painful. <laughs> Can't put the right words to it. But I do understand your pain. And um, yeah, the thing about being flexible is that you can be flexible. But mm -hmm. like Shifa mentioned, it is best that you have travel insurance ready yes. with you. Even like recently as well, I had to explain to so many because when I went to Europe in autumn 2022, I had no written ticket yet. Okay. I had to explain so many times to the people at the counter, to the immigration. I will. I'm only going to be here for one month. I will mm -hmm. come back. I'm flexible sometimes. And maybe your travel insurance and your proof of funds to yes. extent, some countries, they want to see your proof of funds. Mm -hmm. Only then they will allow you, but also negotiate. But we hope you don't go through this. Yes. Yes. And anyone else, guys, just, yeah, the preparation maybe. Uh, because at the time, yeah, I'm still uh don't know when uh i'll be heading out from thailand right maybe after the bangkok i'm planning to go to chiang mai or even uh go via borderland from thailand uh to hatiai and penang in malaysia or even just take a flight from bangkok to kuala lumpur there's a lot of option but yeah <laughs> But it ends up, I think Allah just redirected you to yeah. go to Kuala Lumpur, back to Jakarta. <laughs> Actually, not to Jakarta. No, to Kuala Lumpur, no. I go to Makassar. So, MashaAllah. Yeah, Continue again. Mashallah. Yeah, because at the time, the flexible one, right? So, yeah. Yeah. So, yes, last week, we've learned uh, so much about Indonesia. Not last week, last month. So, sorry. Yeah. Uh, about Indonesia from Gia but Indonesia is huge really, really huge country there's so mm -hmm. many so many to explore so you're mm -hmm. from Badung so yeah. do share with us what does what's the significance of this photo here 
So yeah, Bandung is actually one of the biggest city in Indonesia after Jakarta, the capital city. Like this is the main, uh, if you saw the Cute. my virtual background is uh, Gedung Sate is uh, one of the destination in Bandung. If you saw on this slide show is actually uh, near my college. Um, near my campus so Bandung in West Java you can find a pretty you know like uh it's pretty cold in Bandung uh rather than Jakarta if you if you feel like Jakarta is quite a bus hustling it's bus stuffy. City. It's stuffy, yeah, maybe. yeah. Mm -hmm. in Bandung you can find like peace because it's cold city like uh in just a day just like the 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 temperature maybe around twenty or twenty five degrees Celsius. Say, so, uh, it's really, uh, cold. Um, yeah, Bandung can offer so many things for you that that Jakarta can offer. <laughs> <laughs> like this is it. Yes, yes. Like Gedung Sate Bandung. Like on my. So what is it? Is it like a like a square? Like a medan? Uh, like kinda, kinda, because in front of the Gedung Sate we have like the not that alun. Uh, actually, it's quite different. There, there's a square called Alun Alun Bandung. So there is a mosque in front of them, but in Gedung Sate is actually the regional uh, government uh, office. Mm. Uh, the West Java governor, uh, yeah, work. Uh, in this. it's a landmark where people hang yeah. out around there. Yeah, and then you can find the white crater. It's actually the natural um destination, so you can find the crater with. Yeah, just just come to Bandung with the rice field. Uh, if you saw it uh in sunrise, and um with the cold. You can do like a glamping or camping in this area. So yeah, it's really nice experience to come to Bandung. So that's another alternative compared to uh, Bali rice fields. Yes, 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 yes. And actually Bandung is really near uh, from Jakarta. If you uh, come from Jakarta for like two hours or from the airport directly for maybe like three hours. Two hours by flight by, or by no, train? Travel, bus. By bus. Oh, mm -hmm. that's near. Mm -hmm. So Chuanki and Batagor, just now in the beginning, we we saw that little graphic. Yes. What are these? Yeah, it's special the... food? Yeah, of course. Because <laughs> in Bandung we we most most of uh the the people are Muslim, so we offer like the this this called batagor batagor stands for baso tahu goreng mean fried meatball and tofu with the sauce what is it like kacang peanut peanut peanut, peanut sauce. sauce oh my god yes. yeah peanut sauce it's really nice tasty and a chunky it's quite a bit different with the meatball and then um fried that looks really yummy uh deep fried with the broth it's really nice. And where can um uh, Muslim solo travelers get them? Like by the restaurants, uh, stalls. You can find anywhere, like anywhere the, in Bandung. Stalls, yeah. Uh, with the cheap price for like uh maybe like ten thousand rupiah, less than one dollar, I guess. Yeah, around uh there there's a more. Good deal. Yeah, uh, in the stall uh, or even restaurant. Any anywhere, I guess you can find this uh food like just came up with the Batagor and Chuanki. <laughs> That's really good deal. I want to go to Bandung now, inshallah. Yes. So because oh. there is a direct flight from Kuala Lumpur to Bandung. There oh. is. Okay, then I will have to check that out. So <laughs> thank you so much, Shifa for yes. the lovely sharing session with us today we truly yes. appreciate it any final words before we wrap up and i heard you have a special surprise of course yeah guys please do a uh, comment on this live pause about any anything that you want to share with us like your worst experience maybe you find another another worst worst experience uh, <laughs> on your uh, traveling 
or anything that you can share with us on the comment, please. Uh, if I found some interesting, I'll reach out to you and ask you for the details. Um, yeah, send you a postcard from Bandung or maybe even uh, another city that I'll visit later, inshallah. Inshallah. So is there like an expiration date? Like maybe like, you know, uh, the world... Some people are working right now. Maybe they can answer later. So yes. is there like an expiration date by when should they answer like this? Yes, 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 yes. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram mm -hmm. at It's Achipa. You can find me on Instagram or even TikTok. So mm -hmm. we can, yeah, say hi and catch up. Or even maybe if you are from different city in this uh, world, I can visit you later and we'll catch up. Maybe Definitely. but but just now I wanted to add like like what's the timeline like for people to answer this worst case is it like one week three oh. days oh because like some people who are not live they can catch mm -hmm. the replay later and answer yeah. the question yes yes uh you can comment until I don't know maybe because you know okay let's say one week after this live uh I'll reach out to you to send. Uh, to ask you the address for send the postcard but maybe if you are coming for like one month after this live uh maybe after that um i'm planning to get another place oh, okay okay that's yeah, interesting I, I can send you to a different uh, i can send you the postcard from a different place right because she feels very adventurous i myself <laughs> i'm so excited to know where is she going next can never yes, predict yeah so, okay yeah. don't forget to stay there on my instagram maybe yes. after that. yeah absolutely do check out shifa on instagram as well so mm -hmm. whoever that wants a, a a postcard wants to have a a, a friendly connection with shifa to answer uh what she, uh, what was the question again what's the worst solo worst, traveling experience? Uh, experience or traveling or anything that you can share us on the comments so yeah it can help you it can yes. help another person as mm -hmm. well so thank you so much thank shifa. you so much Mary, for inviting me maybe i can share you uh to send you a postcard from bandung Inshallah, maybe <laughs> but the thing is, you know, I would like to receive it face to face from you. Inshallah, maybe when the time comes, okay, so okay. just save that postcard for. Yeah, yeah. So, since we have already said that, I will also give you a postcard. Thank you, thank you. Because I found myself really nice to uh back then on my last trip uh to Vietnam, Cambodia, and then I just sent out the postcard to my uh home. Uh, address and then it's really nice to That's you know really like receive cool. this portrait even though you are sending out by yourself but yeah still so you they... went like all the way to the post office in vietnam yes 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 i have yet to try that mm -hmm. thing is i always listen to this um i always listen to, uh, recently I, I can't remember who told me like they also like when they travel they mm -hmm. buy the postcard and send it directly from that country i want to try that inshallah yeah. yes yes some some of the postcard uh I haven't received even though back then I just I, I signed up from Penang Malaysia but I still didn't receive after the, <laughs> oh, no. until now oh, but no. yeah my last trip I just uh receive it now so like um uh, three or four postcard it's really nice right inshallah to, to receive I would that. like to include that so many I've learned so much from you and I'm sure the community have learned so much from yeah. you as well Thanks. so yeah do continue our conversation in the community in Shifa's Instagram or LinkedIn and I'll see you in the newsletter thank you Shifa Bye -bye. Bye -bye.